Hey guys, happy Tuesday. So I wanted to share this really quick word and I always say quick word and y'all know them words do not be quick. <laughs> if you've been here long enough, you know that. Um, but this is going to be a really quick word. I have my notes uh, in my phone and then I have notes um, that I wrote so I can remember. Um, and this stuck with me all last night, even until I woke up, but I haven't had a chance to come on because I had some errands to run today. I had to get an oil change. I've been um, doing laundry and just a bunch of stuff. I had a meeting early this morning. So um, every time I thought about doing it, it wasn't the right time, but now is the right time. So I'm going to get this done so I can go get a workout in and finish with my day. But how are y'all doing? I'm glad to know that the word I released yesterday resonated with so many people. I received so many emails and I can't respond to all the emails, but you at least get a heart uh, emoji back to know that I received your email and I read it. If you ask for prayer and you just get my heart emoji, know that when you send me a prayer request, I pray for you. But I received so many emails just about how <sighs> that word resonated with so many of you and God is good. Just even in his confirmations of how he confirmed the word I released yesterday for so many of you guys about 127 and what he's doing in this open door of restoration. So thank you for sharing that with me. Um, and yeah, thank you guys just for everything, for sowing words of kindness. That's a super seed. <laughs> like that's a really big seed. Like seed is not just monetary, but some of you just sow words of kindness. You sow prayers my way and you sow thankfulness my way. And that those are all seeds. And thank you guys for the ones that sow um, monetary seeds. You guys know I never ask you for anything on any of my videos. Will you never hear me say if this is for you, so into it because uh, I don't do that. Um, if it's for you, God will tell you it's for you. And if you're supposed to sow into anybody, the Holy Spirit will lead you there too. So thank you guys for every seed sown, whichever way it comes, um, prayers, whatever, the compliments, just thank you guys. Um, but let me get into this word really quick before I keep going, but let me drink some water because I'm a bit parched. It's been a day, guys. It's been a day. Um... But I had this written down to talk to you guys about last night, but God's timing is perfect because it's a now word. And he gave me revelation, even more revelation to this. So if you've been rocking with me for a while and you, or you watched the word from yesterday and you heard how God gave me years ago, one, two, seven, I'll be at your door. And just over the course of the years, how he added on to that word and had me release to you guys, even the word yesterday, God was saying the one, two, seven is restoration. One plus two plus seven is it's 10. It's his completion of restoration of delivering on his promise of what he told you, whatever it is, restoring you double fold, triple fold, whatever it is for you personally, right? So that was in the word yesterday. Um, but with this word, the Lord is saying, you won't die before he delivers. <laughs> you won't die before he delivers. Death is inevitable. We're all going to die. But when God tells you he's going to do something for you, whoever this word is for, this is not for everybody. We are all in different seasons, but he is saying you won't die before he delivers. And for this word, he brought me to Genesis 23, verse one. And it says, Sarah died at, actually, I'm gonna read it from the NIV version. Hold on. So I'm reading from Genesis 23, verse one. Uh, NIV, Sarah lived to be 127 years old. Sarah lived to be 127 years old. That is verse, um, Genesis 23, verse one, one, two, seven, I'll be at your door. Okay, and what the Lord told me to relate to you guys in this verse, in this word, is that Sarah didn't die without him fulfilling what he promised to do for her, even though in her eyes, in her husband's eyes, in her and Abraham's eyes, it was impossible because they were way 
past childbearing years. They're like, huh, how are you going to do that? Sarah laughed. And God is like, why did Sarah laugh? She's like, I didn't laugh. You did. But God gets the last laugh. God delivered on what he told her. And that was that she would have a child. Now we know she went ahead of him and she had Abraham sleep with her servant and they had an Ishmael, but Ishmael was never the promise. And just because he came first does not mean God looked at him as the promise. The promise was still gonna come when God ordained it to come at his divine timing. Ishmael was never the promise. And God delivered on the promise he made to Sarah and Abraham before she died. And she died at what age? One, two, seven. The Lord is saying, you will not die before he delivers. You will not die before he delivers. And then he took me to Genesis 24, verses 67. And I'm going to read this to you guys. Genesis 24, verse 67, one chapter over from 23, where we hear about Sarah's death at 127 years old. Isaac brought her into the tent of his mother, Sarah. Her is Rebecca. And he married Rebecca. So she became his wife and he loved her. And Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. Abraham sent his servant to find a wife for uh, Isaac. The servant found Rebecca. The servant asked God for key things so that he would know this wife was the wife for Isaac and God delivered on everything that servant asked him to show him. Okay. So he brings Rebecca to Isaac. Isaac then brings Rebecca into Sarah's tent and he marries her. And it says he found comfort in her after his mother's death. The Lord is saying for with many of you guys and what he's restoring you to, this marriage is going to bring you comfort after so much grief that you've went through. Even in Sarah's death, there was a blessing. Even in Sarah's death, there was comfort. There was a joining together. There was a coming together. There was a marriage. There was a covenant made. The Lord is saying you will not die before he delivers. And the other part of this word is you will find comfort after the grief that you've been through. You will find comfort after the grief that you've been through. And for some of you guys, it's comfort in marriage. And if you, I'm going to re, uh, I feel led to re-release this word where the Lord spoke to me and he said, with, with your husband that I have for you, with this person I have for you comes rest. With the person he has for you comes rest. And I'm going to re-release that word because that is a now word. He brought Rebecca, Isaac brought Rebecca into the tent, into Sarah's tent after she died. He married her and he was comforted in his mother's death. The only one that could have comforted him is the wife that God had for him. God, of course, comforted him, but there was a, a job for only the wife of Isaac to do. And it had to be the wife that was chosen by God for him to bring that level of comfort. Two became one and he was comforted in his grief. Many of you guys are about to be comforted after grief. And it doesn't necessarily mean the death of someone. Grief comes in many different forms. So take this how you see fit. I don't wanna make this drawn out or add anything else to this word. The Lord is saying, number one, you will not die before he delivers. Sarah died at 127. Y'all better hear that. God told me 127, I'll be at your door. And he's saying that as a door of restoration, of releasing, of promises for whoever this is for. This is not for everybody. Everybody's in a different season. You will not die before he delivers. And number two, after grief, you're about to be comforted by what he's restoring you to. You're about to be comfort comforted in this covenant for many of you. Not everybody is this comfort marriage, but for who this is for, I need you to see, see this as you and feel this wholeheartedly and take this word to God and let him confirm. 
But for some of you guys, Rebecca's, you need to get ready to go. Because it happened for Rebecca in 24 hours. She showed up at the well. She did everything that the Lord, that the servant had asked the Lord to show him. She did everything right. And by the next day, Rebecca was gone to meet her husband. Her family wanted her to stay a little bit longer. The servant said, no, I need her to come with me right now. Like this is now. So a lot of you guys see yourself as even Rebecca's because this is going to happen for you quickly. This is going to happen quickly and unexpectedly. I don't know if you guys remember in the dream of the 127, I'll be at your door that I released uh, back in 2021. When the person on the phone was telling me 127, I'll be at your door, I went to my door and locked it. I was like, who is this? The man on the phone in the dream knew everything about me. I went to that door and locked it. Like, wait a minute. Rebecca's get ready. Whoever that portion is for, Rebecca's get ready. But God is saying, you will not die before he delivers and you will find comfort after grief that you've been through. Whatever grief you encountered, you will find comfort in what God is about to do in your life. With Sarah's death came a level of comfort for the promise. Ooh, ooh. With Sarah's death came a level of comfort for the promise. Y'all better catch that. I'm gonna sit this all right here. Um, oh no, I'm gonna give you the last verse the Lord gave me. And he's been giving me this verse for the last two weeks. As a matter of fact, when I uh, was looking into going to Pastor R.C. Blake's church, as the Lord had led me to do, uh, I went to his page and the amount of his uh, subscribers to his channel is 818. So even in that, the Lord spoke. God had been giving me 818 for the last two weeks. And he led me to um, Romans 818. And it says, I know it by heart, but I'm going to read it verbatim from the NIV. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. This is Apostle Paul's way of saying Everything that you've been through, the suffering, the turmoil, the loss, whatever it is, cannot compare to the glory that God is about to shine upon your life after that period of suffering. You're not going to be able to compare the two. Yeah, you went through a lot of things, but you're about to find comfort in that grief. You're about to be comforted after that grief. With the promise comes comfort after what you've been through. Now I'm done. I love you guys. I hope you have a great day and we'll talk soon. Bye guys.